This is Martha Wash, and you're watching 10 Minutes with Martha Wash. I'm so glad that you're here because I've been laughing already. Um, sitting with me is the wonderful, so talented, and so much missed oh. comedian, Miss Marsha Warfield. How are you, honey? I am fine, and I'm thrilled to be here with you. I think. <laughs> We, you my sister, you know, that M.W. Martha yes, Marsh. We, yes, you know. yes, we do have the M.W. in common. That's right. That, that is so wonderful. I miss seeing you on TV. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> if you could fix it, I would appreciate it. Hey, listen, what have you been doing? I was retired for a long time. I was at home uh, messing with people on Facebook, and then I just decided I'd mess with them in nightclubs. So I went back to doing stand-up. And you're doing it in Vegas. Yeah, which is not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> but two nights a week, I get to work out at okay. the L.A. Comedy Club on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 10 o'clock. And uh, <laughs> Wednesdays and Thursdays at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Right. And then uh, uh, I just started all over again, you know, like, like I was a rookie. And uh, yeah. started going to bars and, and uh, private, you know, clubs wherever I could get stage time and so yeah. now I'm I'm getting back in the groove. How's it been? It's been okay, you know, it's okay. The business has changed. I've changed. Yeah. I'm a, you know, a different person than I used to be. Uh, yeah. A little, a little, little, little more seasoned. There you are. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> a little it's more seasoned. A little spicier. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that is great to know. So I'm doing my little 10 minute talk show, but you, you had a talk show. Yes, I did. Many years ago called the Marshall Warfield Show, right? Yeah, I, clever title, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we stayed up night trying to figure out what to call it. But uh, yes, it, it just daytime wasn't ready for me. I was ready for uh, daytime, they wasn't ready They for weren't me. ready, for, okay. No. Did Dick Clark produce it? Or No, what? Dick Clark was one of the uh, producers we talked to. It ended up being uh, produced uh, through NBC, I believe, uh, okay. and Darlene Hayes was our producer, mm -hmm. and we had uh, we had Jada Jones was one of the writers, and Paul Mooney. Okay. And um, you know we had a young Rosie O'Donnell before she, wow. uh, you know, became an older Rosie <laughs> an O'Donnell. Old, yeah. <laughs> so you had a lot of people uh, uh, working with you then that were some were known and some were unknown. I've been so blessed. I've been, you yeah. know, fortunate enough. I used to say before I retired yeah. that if I had to quit, yeah. I had no kick coming. And I really didn't. You know, I've been uh, fortunate enough to meet people that other people only read about, that I had only read about. That yeah. I'm sitting here with you. I oh, mean, please. so come on now. Look, you, you, look. <laughs> you, you've had the career, I mean, as far as the comedy and the TV shows and, and movies and things like that. And you down doors and open things up for people and, and it's muchly appreciated and, and uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to sit here with you. Well, it's, look, it's definitely my pleasure. Uh, it's been such a long time because I thought about you a lot over the years and you would, you would, you would really come to my mind and I would be thinking, where is Marshall? <laughs> Seriously. Where is Marsha Warfield? How come nobody has heard from her? You know, what I is found she doing? when you when you uh, retire or you you just not on the scene, yeah. just stay off the scene is better than popping up every once in a while doing something stupid like people. Uh, tend you think to do. so, really? Yeah, I just wanted to lay low. Just and, really back completely away from it. Right, right. Okay, and, uh, and just 
you know, pine. I was, I know the word, the meaning of the word pine, and I was pining for show business. <laughs> and I finally got, got the situation right, you know, the yeah. stars aligned, and yeah. uh, then I guess they started to give it a go. That is so funny. But speak, speaking of your talk show, uh, who were some of your more interesting guests? That Zsa Zsa had? Gabor. What did she, I liked her. What did she do? Zsa Zsa was on after she had slapped the cop. Okay, gotcha. And she explained to us, darling, why she had to slap the cop because he was he was so rude. He did not respect her, uh -huh. and so she as she had no apologies whatsoever. I remember when that happened. Yeah, yeah. and she went on TV. And so yes, I slapped him. Yes. <laughs> like, okay. Boy, talk about privilege. <laughs> I could there never even, go. that would never come to my mind. There you go. Yeah, you have a point. I, I don't <laughs> think it would be that way today. No, I, Jaja, though, might have still gotten away with it, even though she did yeah. go to jail for a minute, I believe. I think for a hot second yeah. she went to jail. What, yeah, it wasn't long. It wasn't long. Who else did you have on that you were? Uh... Oh, Eartha Kitt. She smacked me. Why did she smack you? I don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> she just reached over and said, you are so bad. <laughs> when I was hurt. I mean, because she smacked me pretty good. Um, and we had, I loved having the, the Eartha Kitts and the Jajas and the Cesar Romero's. Oh, and, oh I loved him. You know, those, I those uh, icons and, yeah. and uh, of, of even then of yesteryear. Yeah. I loved yeah. having oh, them. God. And, he was one of my favorites, Cesar Romero. Fantastic, just gorgeous man. And he was so nice and and uh, and supportive and naughty. He was a naughty oh, person. He was naughty. Yes, he was. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, I loved him. Oh, but the, the, the names that you just put out there, right there, those are iconic figures. Oh, you know, iconic when you figures. sit in a room, when you're fortunate enough to be yeah. able to sit in a room with people like... Uh, Nancy Wilson and, mm. and Billy Eckstein and, mm. you know, Joe Williams. And they're talking wow. to you like you actually belong and not like you're supposed to be going to get them drinks. You know? And I <laughs> wow. feel like I want to go get them drinks. Exactly. I'm, exactly. Uh, you know, like I said, I have no kick coming. I'm, a, I'm wow. such a fan of this business and such a yeah. fan of, uh, I'm in awe. I'm in awe of you. I told you. I, oh, I told you that on 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 Twitter. <laughs> I love your tweets. I love your tweets. They are so hysterical. And then other times they say, "Hmm, I need to kind of think about that for a minute." I think she has a point. Well, whether I have a point or not, I think my job is done if people say, you know, I never thought about that. Exactly, so, exactly. And I, especially dealing with our dear him. Resident. In, yeah, <laughs> in, in, the, in the White House. Well, yeah. You know. Looking at some of those tweets have been very, <laughs> very funny for me. Well, he is online. You yes. know, our, our resident White House person is online Twitter. and he's tweeted so I tweeted him and I'll tell him that was stupid <laughs> just say you know how do you how dare you say such things uh, how dare he it does it doesn't bother him he just you know does whatever he feels like can't you just imagine him in like the Lincoln bedroom with watching TV in a dirty robe with a phone, oh. you know, going, you know, bring me a Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What's that? Evidence from the Darcy case. They need IDs. Oh, man, these are those damn sex toys. How am I supposed to identify these? <laughs> He not only can tell you what they are, he can give you their trade-in value. <laughs> well, tell me some stories. See, tell me some stories. Oh, what do you want to know? I want to, you, you know, know what I want to know? What? Sylvester. Okay. Sylvester was crazy as hell. <laughs> um, he told it like it was. Didn't yeah. care if you liked it or not. 
you know, uh, but uh, he was cool. Did you have a sense that you were, were uh, breaking ground and, and, and opening up doors that had been not just closed, just wasn't there? No. It wasn't no door there. Right, true. And he, true. he, you know, carved out a, a pathway for people, for some, somebody like me mm -hmm. who, uh, who came out two years ago. Uh, I'm 64. Okay. I was not free yeah. to be. Yeah. He was him <laughs> for yeah. all of us. Well, yeah. and, and being a part of yeah. that, uh, did y'all have a sense? Uh, and was there pushback? At that time, the record company, I'm supposed to be talking about you. <laughs> Well, see, this but is since important you to me. You, but since you're asking me the question, I will, I will answer <laughs> it. Uh, the record company at one time had a slight problem trying to market him. You know, uh, the people that heard his music, uh, black, white, gay, straight, didn't matter. They liked the music. Right. They liked Sylvester and Two Tons of Fun. So that's how we kept it moving, you know, and whoever wants to come on board, enjoy the music, cool. And that's how we uh, uh, that's how we did things. He did get pushback again from the record company and powers that be in the business, you know, because at that time nobody was ready for a gay black entertainer in right. the front at all. So that was kind of where the pushback came from, and how to deal with him and how to market him and that kind of thing. But he didn't care. He was just going to keep on doing his music and just do what he did. And moving forward with Two Tons of Fun and, and you know, and all of that, his, he was really, really way before his time. Of course. If he yeah. was living today and he was the same age then, it would be no problem. Right. No problem whatsoever. But well, we appreciate yeah. all of y'all. <laughs> you have no idea. You, I mean, and, and I could tell stories of, 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 of what you've meant yeah. to me in the industry, but I won't uh, I appreciate that, embarrass though. you. But, I do. Uh, I you appreciate know, that. I know things ain't always easy, and it's easy sometimes to just let stuff go yeah. and, uh, and go along to get along. Yeah. And it takes a, a lot of courage yeah. and a lot of intestinal fortitude and a lot of... Yeah. Girl power. <laughs> yeah, <And laughs> to I put them out there and say, "No, wait a minute, that don't work." Now. Right, and I think I think for me, as as I've gotten older, um, I I'm really don't have time for the BS. <laughs> for me, I just basically kind of keep it moving. I really, really wanted to interview you to find out. Where's she been? Where's she at? What's she doing? She's been at home, and now she now they no. now she outside. <laughs> How did you get started in the business, and who gave you your first break? Well, I started in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I was 20 years old, mm -hmm. and I read an article in the paper about uh, uh, open mic, which was a new thing at the time, mm -hmm. uh, 1974. Uh, Tom Dreesen had just broken up with his partner. Okay. Tim Reed, and they were the first interracial comedy team, uh, and they had just broken up. T Tim moved to Los Angeles, and Tom was still in Chicago, so he started an open mic uh, at a club called The Pickle Barrel and said that anybody could come down and do five minutes so, and they called those people virgins. Mm -hmm. So I told a friend of mine I was going, and I never went. And one day she came uh, to buy my house like at six o'clock in the evening and said, put your clothes on, let's go. Uh, we're going down to the club. You've been talking about it, let's do it. So we went and about two o'clock that morning, I finally went on stage and I said, uh, my name is Marsha Warfield and I'm a virgin. So <laughs> please be kind. And that was the beginning. <laughs> I'm a virgin. Okay, were you a virgin? I was divorced, <laughs> so, so I don't think so. <laughs> By that time, huh? Okay. Yeah, I got married at 18. I, I needed to get out the house. Okay. So I got married at 18, to, uh, separated at 19, divorced at 20. That was quick. Yeah, bought okay. a house and a car. 
I was, uh, you know. You were kind of set there for a minute. Well, see, my parents were upwardly mobile. They were middle ghetto. And, uh, <laughs> okay. and so I was the middle ghetto child. And uh -huh. That was what you did. You know, I, if you didn't go to college, then you just became respectable. And so I was respectable. Oh. Transitioning into uh, the comedy and then going into the TV and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm trying <laughs> to figure out my next question. Okay. Well, I can tell you, after I worked around Chicago for a couple of years, I moved to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, The Tonight Show had just moved to Los Angeles, and uh, the comedy store was just taking off, and the okay. improv, mm -hmm. they were in their infancy. Mm -hmm. And so I came in on that... Uh, that ground floor, and there were very few women doing comedy at that time. I think Sandra Bernhardt was there, Shirley Hemphill, okay, um, and a few other women. And uh, Elaine Boozler came out like mm -hmm. uh, within a year or so. Uh, that was in 1976 when I moved to Los Angeles, and so I started working around there. Right. And then Richard Pryor would come to the club to work out, okay. and uh, nobody wanted to follow him. Because, I wonder why. Yeah, they just didn't. So I would volunteer to follow him uh, because really I nice. said, well, and I, I was taught by uh, my mentors, like James Wesley Jackson, Brad Sanders, and uh, the, Tom and those people that were mm -hmm. around in Chicago, that whoever went on before you is gone now. The okay. people who are there, who stayed, who mm -hmm. stayed afterwards, want to see more show. Right. Don't cheat right. them by, by you know, talking and dwelling on the person they already saw. They saw them. They okay. want to see somebody else, so go do your stuff. Right. So that's what I did. And Richard liked that about okay. me. Yeah. And yeah. then when he got his, uh, his variety show mm -hmm. uh, on NBC, uh, Paul Mooney yeah. was uh, one of the writer-producers and uh, helped cast the show and cast me in a lot of people from the comedy store, and that's how I got on that show. Do you think you were, I want to say, really the first black woman uh, comedian to really take off? You know, I happened to be uh, doing a kind of stand-up that most women didn't do. Shirley did stand-up, okay. but she was, uh, once she got on what's happening, she didn't do as much. Right. Uh, and there were very few women who weren't doing characters that uh, weren't, you know, like Joan Rivers was kind of a caricature of a housewife mm -hmm. and Phyllis Diller and, okay, right, and that right. kind of genre. Mm -hmm, right. But the, the monologist, the grab the mic and, mm -hmm. you know, take it by the tits, right. uh, <laughs> was like me and Elaine. And that was about it, that we're not just talking about boyfriends and stuff like that. And so I happened to get on Soul Train yeah. uh, because Don Cornelius from Chicago and uh, knew of me somehow. Right. And I happened to do that and uh, got to open for the old Jays. And, and then I went on tour, tour with Teddy Pendergrass. And okay. so I got to do a few things uh, right. that gave me credit, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. uh, led to other stuff. And uh, it all came out uh, from leaving town and moving to Los Angeles. So what do you think about now, dealing with, you know, during that time there was no internet, there was none of that stuff that you have now, where everybody wants to be a star. Yeah. You know, you can be a YouTube star or whatever. What do you think about that? And would you deal with that kind of, technology as far as like doing a show for yourself, say maybe on YouTube, have your own YouTube show or something like that? Yes and no. I think a lot of that self-production, uh, self-promotion, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are in my mind separate jobs. You know, production, promotion, uh, agents, managers, those are separate jobs. Nowadays, uh, performers have to do it all themselves. Yeah. And they're doing everything from selling popcorn <laughs> to printing tickets, you know, out yeah. in the street, you know, yeah. hawking CDs right, and stuff. Right. And um, 
and that's fine. Yeah. But I'm not them. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, for me, the, the proof is in the pudding. The, yeah. the, I do stand up. All right. And I want to do stand up. And if I don't have a solid product mm -hmm. as a stand up, I don't want to just do, you know, little sketches. And I mean, I've done them on, you know, little Marsha Bennett's on Instagram and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And those are fun. Yeah. But what I do is stand up comedy. And so yeah. uh, that's where I put most of my focus in and uh, building that act and getting yeah. those chops and right. being and able I think, to hold that stage. And I think the other thing is getting that immediate gratification when that joke hits well you, you know. know yeah <laughs> you yeah. know whereas when you right. do a, an instagram or a, a facebook or whatever you know you get feedback but right. it's not right. always uh well it's not positive always either. it's not just positive it's not just honest and organic you know it's a yeah it can be very superficial and right. twice removed that's, you know yeah yeah that's and true and so i like that uh one on one with an audience and, yeah. and stuff. And then we can put that on on video and we can put right. that online right. when it's time. But uh, yeah. uh, as as far as being a YouTube star, or trying <laughs> to accumulate a, a billion Twitter followers, it's like it's nuts. What difference does it make if when you hit that stage and the light is on you and there's nobody else there and nothing yeah. to fall back on if all yeah. you've got is a bunch of Twitter followers. You know, you yeah. need to be able to talk oh. to those people who paid to see you. And so that's where yeah. I try to focus my attention. I get it. How does comedy work? Sometimes it don't. <laughs> no, well, so, yeah, but, but uh, you know what? I've, I, I've thought of as far as comedy was concerned, some comedians tell jokes. Yes. Some comedians tell stories yes. that become jokes. So where do you fall? Well, I don't tell jokes jokes, you know, like, <laughs> okay. you know, two guys walked into a bar, you know, who cares? Who are these two guys? Right. <laughs> Why do we care right. where they went? I talk about uh, my life. I talk about uh, my perspective on things. I talk about uh, growing up upper ghetto mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to middle ghetto or low ghetto or mm -hmm. country <laughs> or, uh -huh. or hood. Yeah. It, those yeah. are different, you know, categories in the black community because we don't get classes like everybody else. You right. know, when they talk about upper class, they're not talking about us. So I'm right now uh, middle ghetto with upper ghetto aspirations. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so. That's where I'm going, and those are the kinds of things I talk about. I talk about, you know, being this age, and yeah. where you have to mark time different uh, than young people do. Mm -hmm. You know, we mark time uh, uh, according to, uh, like, the first time you pee a little bit. That's, you know, a milestone <laughs> for us. You know? And you, you didn't mean to. <laughs> And Just you try, to, try not to tell nobody, Just but happened. then it finally comes out. And you know, you know, the other day I, I kind of giggled and I peed a little bit. And you, <laughs> no. the people go, oh, girl, I'm peeing right now. Don't pay no attention. And it just, you know, sharing those moments is uh, cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because a large demographic can relate. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. They can relate <laughs> to it. <laughs> You have to you prepare for those moments when you go out now. You're like, yes. well, I might pee a little bit, so let me. Okay. <coughs> I'm so sorry. That's a joke. <laughs> yes, I understand exactly. Yes. No, okay. So, yeah, yours is for uh, uh, life experiences. Yes, it's visceral comedy. It's comedy yes. from the gut. Yeah, where, where, where I just, can you know. Really really relate you to know, it. You know, like you have, I'm trying to yeah. prepare the young people <laughs> for what's ahead. There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. For being here and being with me. I, I love you. I love you. I love you. Anytime. <laughs> uh, thank you all for watching 10 Minutes with Martha Wash. And for more information, please check out 
our FLOD magazine where Miss Warfield is the cover story. All right, see you next time. I'm not coming